all the kind of stuff. Okay, hey everyone. Uh, so my name is Ludwig, and I'm part of the Russell Adventure team. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little about about how you can customize Cocos 2D with some shaders of your own. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, is there anyone here who doesn't know what Cocos 2D is? One guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for you, it's a uh, it's a 2D graphics engine. It's open source and it's built on top of OpenGL. Uh, it's really easy to use, and I can recommend that you play around with it if you have got some spare time. Uh, it's also cross-platform if you're, for instance, using a portable, as we are planning to do, uh, and. It's also available for OS X, but since this is a mobile focus talk, I'm going to skip any of that. So it's going to be OpenGL ES uh, from now on. And I've prepared a little demo for you. So now comes the time to switch this project. What was it? Okay. OK, there we go. Uh, I'm using my phone because uh, the performance in the simulator is kind of sluggish. Uh, and that's because it's using a software rasterizer instead. Uh, OK, so here's our little game. Um, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not very complex, and it's uh, kind of <laughs> lacking the enemy, so you're going to have to <laughs> imagine them. <laughs> But uh, you can do that yourself. I'm going to make the source code available, and you can release it on the App Store and may wage war against the Flappy Bird clones. Uh, uh, so, so this is just a couple of sprites and a scrolling background. Uh, nothing fancy, but it just took me like an hour to get it running from scratch. Uh, so, it's really easy to work with, uh, but as you can see, there there aren't any shaders happening here. It's just the basic draw calls. So, what we're going to do next is to um, see what we can do to make this look a little nicer. And I'm going to focus on the missiles here. Um, <laughs> and uh, first off. Uh, I'm going to create a light source for their flame that will light up the background. Uh, and we're going to create a little heat effect behind the flame that will, like, you know, how it looks like at the <laughs> above a candle, like how it distorts the in background. Uh, and I'm going to switch back now. Is it two? No, PC. PC. Where did my... And here you see the, the basic code for the missile that I showed you. And as you can see, it's just a couple of lines. Uh, of course, you need a couple of images. And I thank Google Images for all the artwork in this game. <laughs> I hope not the original creators are offended, but uh, uh, the only tweaking is that I'm using additive blending on the the uh, the flame behind the missiles. So, um, and what we're going to do is uh, first off, uh, since I don't have a lot of time, I'm just going to focus on one of the effects, and that is the heat distortion. Uh, but the lighting is done with a deferred lighting scheme that's kind of popular in all, almost all AAA games nowadays. Uh, that's like you decouple the geometry from the lighting so it's um, 
but but you can you can browse through the code yourself and see what's going on. Uh, but the heat effect is going to do a little kind of advanced technique. Uh, first, we're going to render the background and the lights to an off-screen texture, uh, and then for each missile, uh, we're going to add a warping effect behind it. So we're going to use another texture, which will use as a lookup to to move around the texture coordinates for for uh, for the background, and it will create this uh, sizzling effect. And to do this, we're going to use OpenGL shaders. And uh, is there anyone here who does not know what that is? It's one one guy again. That's okay. Um, it's a uh, it's a little program that runs on the GPU of the of your device. Uh, it and it's uh, one for the vertex part and one for the fragment part and it's uh, it's easier than you might if maybe all of you have written your own shaders I don't know but uh, it's uh, for me when I first started out it felt kind of daunting but it was turned out to be much easier than you might expect um, and since this is OpenGLES and uh, we're going to use OpenGLES shading language 1.0 and it's available for every iPhone uh, except the first one, I think, but that's not around. So. And for this heat effect, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to distort the image. And to distort the image, we're going to need a distortion map that will skew the texture coordinates for each pixel behind it. And that's the one in the bottom left. And it's it's actually a normal map for those who who know what that is, but. We're just going to use the x and the y coordinates of it, and not don't bother with the the blue. That's the z value. And we're also going to mask the effect so that uh, because we're going to draw a square sp sprite behind the uh, behind the missile, and we don't want to. We need the mask, otherwise it will be a sharp edge. Uh, And here's the new code for the projectile that I'm, uh, and it's, th th this is not where all the magic, so, so to speak, is happening, but uh, all that happens is that we, these are the additions where we add the pro projectile light and the heat effect. Uh, and all we do in the update method is to just set their coordinates to the same coordinates as the, uh, the missile. And Cocos 2D makes a lot of the uh, OpenGL OpenGL boilerplate code right really easy. And this is all you need to set up a render texture uh, for the entire screen. That's the first line. And in the update method, this is, and this is for the update method in the update method for the entire scene, so to speak. Um, all we do is clear the render texture and draw the background and all the lights to it, and that's it. And once that happens, we can use this texture as a background for our heat effects. And here's just a little, I don't, code snippet, I don't expect you to read it, it's how you load uh, uh, your own shaders in Cocos 2D. And again, they make it really easy, uh, it, just a couple of lines, and uh, all you pretty much have to do is like add the extra uh, uniforms and uh, attributes that you have added to the shader. In this case, uh, we're using three textures instead of one. Uh, Cocos only ever uses one, but we're using three. And a uh, vector that displaces the, uh, um, the distortion effect to make it appear as if it's 
the missile is moving very fast, even though, as you saw, they were quite slow. Um, and this is all you have to do to make use of those three textures. This is uh, uh, the draw method of uh, Cocos 2D, and I just overwritten it and it's and added the purple box uh, to set up the three textures um, and that's the background the the normal map distortion and the mask and here you can see the fragment shader of this heat distortion effect and uh, it's actually it's really really simple it just takes the uh, first line uh, just loads the warp mask the second line uh, loads the the from the no, the normal map the red and the green components and we would use those to distort the texture coordinates of the background and finally we load the background with the warped coordinates and then output it to our GL fragment color, and I'm gonna show you what the uh, updated effects look like. I know if you, I don't know if you can tell the difference, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> <it's>, uh, <laughs> uh, as you can see, the missiles now light up the background, um, and I we warp the the image in behind them to make it look like they're very hot and moving very fast. <laughs> but <laughs> you could probably walk past them, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, and all in all, this part, this took me like like a day to write, so it's, uh, it's not that hard. Um, so it's, it's your almost complete shooter with a hippo and, uh, <laughs> and missiles. And again, I... Uh, I hope the artists who made these don't get upset. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. Let's move back to the... And so what about performance? Well, uh, for the <laughs> iPhone 4, there's no party, but uh, for the the new A7 chip, uh, it's actually really fast, and it's approaching uh, the speed of the last generation consoles in terms of shader performance. So there's a lot you can do, and uh, the compute power uh, the, is much larger than the memory bandwidth. Uh, it's being a mobile system, uh, the memory bandwidth is very limited. Uh, so it's, uh, it's probably more efficient to compute a number than to load it from a lookup texture. Uh, and speaking of textures, if you, if you use a lot of them, I really recommend that you compress them using PVRT, which is uh, PowerVR's uh, rendered uh, texture compression uh, scheme. It's, uh, it compresses everything down to the like two to four pixel bits per pixel, uh, and it makes it much faster. Uh, it's uh, you can read about it everywhere, but it makes the that's the thing that makes the most difference in kind of, in terms of performance usually. Uh, so, well for. For the iPad 3 and the iPhone 4, you might have to scale down these kinds of effects. And so, but that's it. So, 
I will make the source code available later if you want to check it out. But right, yeah. <laughs> I was going to show you one place where we're using these kinds of effects in Russell Adventure if you want to see. Yeah. Gonna be a big hit, this. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've seen this, but uh, here's, this is an example of uh, not only a custom shader, but also a custom shapes. Uh, we're, we're blurring the background, and also, as you can see, having a, a simple fluid animation, fluid simulation to distort the surface. And uh, so it's, if you're using Cocos 2D, I can really recommend trying out and writing your own custom shaders. It's, it's a lot of fun and, and actually kind of easy. So that's it. Thank you. <laughs>